Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a very simple camera shake effect to add some realism to your camera movements, whether that be for a storm that's happening or a earthquake or some sort of explosion. This will allow you to layer on a camera shake track on top of your existing camera animation to add that effect that the camera is being held by somebody's hand and is getting jostled so let's get into it all right so i'm starting with this sandstorm effect here that i have and i have a very simple camera animation if i just play through it here it's just going to be slowly translating from right to left here and what i'm going to do is add a camera shake effect layer over top of this one just as a side note if you'd like to learn how to make this sandstorm effect that you see in my viewport here i have an online course for those of you out there who are beginners to niagara and want to learn how to make these sort of weather effects link in the description below the video. So I'm going to come over to my effects folder here that I've made and I'm going to right click in the empty space and what I want to come up to here is the blueprint class. I'm going to choose that and what you're going to see here is something like this and what I want to do is not choose any of these preset classes here but I'm going to come over here to the all classes drop down and I'm going to type in camera shake here. There's a few ways you could go about doing this but the way I'm going to teach you here is to come to the camera shake base effect here and choose select. Now now this blueprint I'm going to be calling BP for blueprint underscore camera shake and I'll be a little more specific I'll make it camera shake wind because this effect particularly I'm going to be tweaking to make it look like it's getting blown by the wind I'm going to double click that to open it when you first open the effect it's going to look something like this but what you need to do is just come up here to the hit the save button and once you've done that you're going to close that and then reopen it and it's going to look like this it's going to look different and this is what we want so I'm going to minimize here so we can see it better all right so I'm going to come over here to my camera sequence and I'm going to scroll down here to my cinematic camera actor and the way I'm going to add this camera shake that I've just made is come to the cinematic camera actor track here click the track plus track option and choose camera shake. And I'm gonna choose the one I've just made here, BP camera shake wind. Now it's telling me there's no duration or anything contained to this effect yet, but that's correct because we haven't added anything. So if I come over here to my camera effect, first thing I'm gonna do is choose the root shake pattern, which I'm gonna use a pearl and noise for, but you can experiment with these other options as well. I'm gonna choose pearl and noise. And the first thing it's telling me is that I need a timing. So I'm gonna expand the timing. And right now it is telling me that it is gonna be one second long. I don't want that. I want this to be a continuous effect. And so I can achieve that by entering zero into this field here. Now it will just play continuously. And if we open up my sequence here, you can see that the track can now be extended infinitely. And it's just going to be this yellow bar, which means that it will just play the camera shake continuously. When I hit play, you're going to already see a camera shake that's applied to this camera. However, this is not exactly the way I want it to look. So I'm going to be tweaking some settings. Open up my camera shake blueprint again. And the things I'm going to adjust I'm going to contract timing and open location and rotation. For the purposes of this particular effect, I'm going to eliminate all location shake because I don't want the camera to be moved in translation. I just want it to be moved in rotation. By coming up here to the location amplitude multiplier, I can make that zero and that is going to make all of my location wiggle to be zero. All right. I'll contract location and now I'm going to dive into rotation, which right now is zero. So if I go ahead and add a one here and hit compile, I come back over to my sequence and I hit play. Now we're getting a bit of a rotation shake to the camera. This is pretty good, but we can modify this further. Right now it feels like a bit of a slow boat like feeling. And what I want it to feel is that it's buffeted really harshly by the wind. And so I'm going to expand the pitch, yaw and roll, which weirdly corresponds to X, Y, Z rotation. They're called pitch, yaw, and roll here specifically because they're referring to a camera. Now I can adjust these global settings here if I want. Amplitude is the strength of the movement and the frequency multiplier is how short each of those movements is. So if I increase this frequency multiplier to something like two, hit compile, I come back to my sequence, the motions are going to be a lot shorter. So it's going to finish a motion quicker 
and move to the next one quicker. So the frequency of the noise has changed. Not the amplitude of the movement, but the frequency, which is in this case translating into speed of the movement. This rotation amplitude multiplier that I can affect up here, as well as the rotation frequency multiplier, these global controls are also present in these individual axes. So if I want to further refine this movement, I can come down here to the individual axes. For example, I'm getting a lot of this sort of rotation, which I don't want as much because the wind is not blowing it in this rotation, it's blowing it this way. So I need to lower that amount so I can come over here to the roll drop down and I can either lower the amplitude here maybe to 0.5 and perhaps I can also lower the frequency to 0.5 and that's going to make it a slower motion and a less aggressive motion. So if we hit play, now we're getting most of our motion side to side and up and down, which is what we want. And for me, this effect is a little bit strong. This is all about subtlety. You don't want to draw too much attention to the fact that you're using this effect. You want it to just feel like part of the motion. So I'm going to come back over here to the rotation amplitude multiplier and the rotation frequency multiplier. And I'm going to lower the amplitude down to 0.5 here, hit play. And this looks pretty good. You can continue to tweak to your heart's content for it to match the effect that you have going on in your environment. This is why I'm going to leave it here. If you found this video helpful, throw me a thumbs up. And if you like these videos and you want more of them, hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next one.